even though the chord progression of this song is quite simple, it's four chords, E minor, D, C and G, fill those three distinct bass lines in this song. The intro, the verses, which is the same for the solo, and then the outro. So I'm gonna start off with the intro. Now, first up, I'll show you our root notes. We've got E for E minor, which is right here on the seventh fret. You can use your dots to tell you that of the A string. Then you move down to the next dot, and you've got D major, and then move down to the next dot, which is the third fret, and you've got C major. And now again, you just switch across the same fret, and you've got G. So that's the four root notes. And Phil just kind of makes them a bit more interesting, plays some cool things for the, in this intro. So here we go with the intro. First off, you're going to need to have that phaser sound that Phil is using, which is an effect that you can get on some amps, or you can get in the pedal, or even apps now these days. So you want to set that at a fairly low rate. So you can hear that just swelling throughout the notes there, it's pretty cool. And then you've got to get yourself a pick, because Phil in it played with a pick, good heavy pick. He played kind of like a guitar player, because that's how he started out. And of course it helped with singing, because playing bass and singing is notoriously difficult. But this kind of swinging, strumming attack that he had was great for that. So let's dig straight in. So we're going to go on the 7th fret of the E string, we're going to hold down, I use my pinky finger to do this because I've got extra movement down with the rest. And I go down, up. Then I move over to the A string, 5th fret, using my dots again, I do the same thing. And then I'm up to the 7th fret. Okay. Now our next section. just rocking between those notes. So 7th, 5th, 7th, 5th, 7th. And now we're going to go 7, 5, 3, and now at this part, we're just going to use our G major scale to take us home. We're going to go third fret, second fret, open A, and finish in the G. And you'll notice I'm using a lot of damp damping with my right hand as well. Just keep those notes kind of tight. Last part then is on the G, really damp down here, and you're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and that's your intro. Now the verse kind of simplifies everything. He's going back to his root notes because he's gonna be singing here, and he's gonna be really strumming along. So I've noticed on some of the tabs online, some of the lessons, there's a little section of this that's kind of left out, a little trick to fill those. So I'll play it for you now. So he's hitting the root note of the E on the 7th fret, he's throwing a little ghost note in there, I just kind of release the grip there and I hit that ghost note and then I've got two ups. And now here's the trick that gets left out, you hit the open A string while still keeping the dampen on, then you move down to the D. Same trick to get you to the C. onto the G. The chorus is pretty much the same, you just got to lead in with that riff we started with and you're into the chorus. Now Phil throws in some little decorations here and there, he might throw in um, a set kind of a minor chord for the E, just hitting that fifth fret of the D string. 
that kind of comes in in the chorus. Just use your, these little tricks at your own discretion because that's what Phil would do live. He'd kind of throw them in there and then he'd keep himself interested. Um, that's the same idea for the verse, chorus and solo. And you kind of mix it up with some of those little ideas and throwing in the lead in. And you'll notice as well, we don't really have to phase our sound on this because it's kind of overpowering in that sense. So only when the main riff comes back, you switch your phaser back on. Okay, last section, probably the most fun to play because Phil gets to stand back and rock out with the guitar players and just really go for it. He starts doing some walking bass lines. Now, a walking bass line is really cool. You're taking the notes of your chord and you're gonna move through them. Your roots, your thirds, your fifths. Sometimes there's sevens based on what you're doing and you've got some of the scale you're working with. So, it's a fairly simple pattern, even though it sounds pretty cool. I'll show you the E minor first. He's gonna play the E in the same spot we found it. And then we're going up to his minor third, which is a G. And then he's gonna go up through the A, which is in our scale, but it's just a passing note here. And then we get to our B, which is our fifth. So we've got our A um, E minor chord. And I'm hitting those in that same strong down up style. I do the same for D, but we have to make it a major chord, okay? So we're going root of D, fifth fret there of the A, then fourth fret on the D string, then fifth fret, seventh fret. So we've got. And you can repeat this pattern for C. So it's going third, then second, third, fifth. for G. So let's put that together. Cool, so he's kind of using that idea throughout this outro, but then he can switch it up a few times as well. He might go up and then change it on the D, change it on the C just going backwards through them and then you might use your scale to get back around G. G, A, B, then a D, take us up to the E. And you'll hear around as I'm jamming with the drummer and stuff, I've got a few little fills in there which um, kind of play around with some of those ideas as well. A um, couple of seventh notes in there, a couple of chromatics. Have a listen, that's the bones of it. Most importantly, have fun. So thank you.